Hi there, this is already the last video in our series on the predicate evaluation in PostgreSQL and MoneyDB. There are some final bits that we want to add to our discussion of the predicate evaluation in MoneyDB because we ended the last video on a negative note in a sense. We have seen that there is quite the performance penalty when it comes to the relation of control flow branches, especially if they are hard to predict in modern pipeline CPUs. So what can you do about that? What did the MoneyDB folks do about that? And we will see in this video. And this will end on a much more positive note, I hope. All right, so let's get to it. So we have uh, said that uh, any branch uh, that we don't have to perform in, during the relation of uh, uh, predicate relation is a good thing. Uh, this is, of course, tough because predicate relation is all about branching. It's all about detecting the outcome of a Boolean uh, expression and then performing decisions based on that outcome. But there is indeed, there is indeed a ways to perform branchless selection, branchless selection. Uh, and that's, uh, that's quite a clever trick. And uh, let me let me walk you through it. So um, if you recall, that would be the core, that would be the core of the theta select routine that we've already seen, the routine in PostgreSQL, in MoneyDB, that uh, is at the very core of predicate evaluation. Okay, so if you recall, that would be the loop over the input, with the input vector col here. Each of the elements would be compared with some uh, some uh, sentinel value v here. So if you are, if you, the current uh, input vector element, if you are less than v, then this would be uh, um, a a row that can pass the predicate and we would record it in the selection vector and we would then enter this block record the offset of the row inside the selection vector and then maintain the index into the selection vector so that we append all the uh, qualifying rows to the selection vector and the problematic control flow branch here is exactly this if then else Will this branch be taken and will we enter this piece of code or will we not? This is really hard to predict for the CPU. It depends, the predictability for the CPU really depends on this predicate. If this is a very selective, is this is a very selective predicate and the very selective means that this predicate is really picky about the rows that are being ad admitted. Okay. So if this is really selective, then we will enter this part of the code very seldomly. Almost always we will jump around this particular block and not enter this particular piece of code. If this is almost always the outcome of this predicate, then this predicate is very good to predict. If the selectivity of this predicate is low, if the predicate is very picky, then we are in this selectivity range here, all right? And that means that the outcome of the predicate of this branch is really very well to predict. And uh, we can see that in the overall runtime of this loop, we will see that for very well predictable predicates with low selectivity, we will see rather comparable low runtimes of this entire loop. This is this area of the graph. The more unpredictable the predicate gets, the more random the outcome is. Some of the rows of the input vector will satisfy the predicate and we will enter this particular region. Some of the rows won't. It's hard to predict what will happen. Then the selectivity of this predicate is probably around 50%. Half of the rows will uh, qualify, half of the rows won't qualify. It's super hard to predict for the CPU whether the branch will be taken or won't be taken. This is this area of the graph. And you can see if we measure the runtime of this particular uh, loop, then we will indeed see a significant increase in runtime on modern CPUs. All of this is due to branch mispredictions, to retired instructions that had to be uh, removed from the pipeline because we were doing our branch prediction in the wrong fashion. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, if the selectivity of the predicate is uh, is uh, further increasing, and it's very very probable that we will indeed enter this particular piece of code. So almost all of the rows will enter this particular piece of code, but of course the predicate is less picky. It's uh, very admissible, uh, and uh, many rows qualify. Then again, the branch becomes more predictable, and we will enter this particular region of the of this runtime graph where predictability again strikes and we are in better shape. Okay, all in all, we will probably have uh, somewhat higher runtimes at this far end of the graph because there's actually work to be done. We actually have to do the stores here. Uh, this was different when we had a very picky predicate, but still the predictability, the predictability increases and we will uh, see that in better overall runtimes. Okay, so this is the uh, the situation with the normal vanilla implementation of the setter select tight loop, the selection loop. All right, now on to branch less selection. So the second alternative of code that you see down below here, this piece of code is supposed to do the same thing as the upper version one of the loop. But as you can see, no branch, no branch inside this inner tight loop. All right. Instead, what we see is an unconditional store, an unconditional store of the current offset, of the current row offset in the selection vector at offset out here. Okay. Okay. An unconditional store. That means that any row, even those rows that don't qualify regarding the predicate, would find their row that would find their place inside the selection vector here. This is really problematic, right? Well, it's not problematic if we don't increase the out index, the index pointing is to the selection vector. If we place something here that actually has no has no uh, uh, reason to be here, if we store the offset of an of a row here that actually didn't qualify then we better overwrite it on the next iteration of the for loop. And that's exactly what's being done by this clever assignment here, the clever assignment and uh, increment. When you look at this uh, predicate here, this is just the predicate that we have to evaluate in our selection. Regarding the semantics of C, the C programming language, if this predicate is evaluated to false, that false value is represented by the integer zero. Okay, so a false evaluation of this predicate will lead to the evaluation of an integer zero. If this is zero, then this will not increase out. And on the next iteration of the for loop, out will not have changed. The not qualifying row will be overwritten in the selection vector. It will be overwritten by the next row that we are considering in this outer loop. Should this predicate indeed be uh, true, then the representation of true in the C programming language, in this context at least, would be the integer 1. All right. So any row that can satisfy this predicate will evaluate this expression to 1. So out will indeed be increased. On the next iteration, we will place more information, more row IDs in the subsequent, in the next selection vector slot and will not overwrite this uh, the OID that we have just placed there. Super clever trick. Super clever trick. Uh, no if then else or branching going on. We evade the predicate, but we use the predicate in, uh, and, and interpret it as either integer 0 or 1 and use that 0 or 1 to increment the, uh, the pointer into the selection vector. Super clever. Okay. And what we can see regardless Regardless of the selectivity of this predicate, indeed the runtime of the overall loop of this branchless loop is indeed really stable. It's not affected by the selectivity and it's not affected by branches or mispredicted branches because there aren't any. Uh, we see a slight increase of runtime in the uh, at the very far end here because there's me more memory excesses uh, are, are going on and the, the, the size of the selection vector indeed grows, but that's really uh, a minor increase here. Actually, we have a very flat performance profile. 
that's not affected by selectivity or the mispredictation of branches. The only branch that is uh, being left in this in this in this code is the branch that is implementing the for loop that is taking care of returning to the top of the for loop if we have not yet processed size input vector elements. But this is one of the branches that is really very well to predict. We will always take the branch only in the very last iteration. We will fall through here and leave the for loop. And this is very well predict to predict for a modern CPU. Okay. So let's see if we can really see that in uh, in the real on the real system here. All right. So I brought a C program that implements just that. It implements the uh, the selection in the normal fashion and also in the branchless fashion. Let's see. Uh, okay. So I'm uh, I'm allocating an input vector of a particular size that I've pre-specified, an input vector of integers, and I also uh, allocating a selection vector. I'm very, I'm very uh, conservative here, and uh, I'm assuming that well, it may be that all of the values in this column uh, qualify. So the selection vector is just as large as the input column vector. But uh, normally, the selection vector will turn out to be way smaller than the input vector. Okay. Then we populate the input vector with some random values. Okay. And then we start evaluating uh, selections. Uh, you see that for each of these uh, experiments rounds that we will do here, I will generate a new comparison value v here. I will start v at zero. And uh, since my predicate is this, is there any column, column value less than zero? If I start with v at zero, no, no uh, particular row will be able to qualify regarding this predicate. I will then gradually increase the value of v here. We perform many rounds through this uh, experiment loop here. The value of v will increase. The likelihood that uh, column values in my input column can satisfy this predicate will increase. If v finally reaches the maximum value that we have placed in the input column, the maximum random value that we have placed there, then all of the rows, all of the rows will qualify regarding this particular predicate. So over time, over the iterations through this outer experiment loop, the selectivity of the predicate will increase. It will become less and less picky in a sense. Okay, so uh, we will of course implement this uh, this uh, selection in the normal theta select in the vanilla theta select sense uh, we will just use branching and of course probably see mispredicted branches depending on the selectivity of the predicate and depending on the number uh, of times we enter this uh, this piece of code or just will jump around it okay so that's just the experiment okay of course, we will measure time and we will even uh, print the selectivity that we have observed here so that we can relate the observed runtimes with the current selectivity that is in place in the loop. This closes the loop so that we can uh, iterate with a new selectivity. Okay, so that's my C program. Let's switch over to the shell here. Okay, and then actually compile that program and run it. Okay, so compile, right, and then run the program. You see these runs with different selectivities. Okay, so selectivity indeed increases from 0% to 100% as we have just uh, described. Okay, and this is the runtimes of the overall loop that we are expecting that we are measuring, I'm sorry. And uh, indeed, uh, we start out with very well predictable branches. The predicate is, predicate is super picky and we will not enter the, the piece of code that writes a selection vector. And because the predicate is so super, super uh, predictable, we see some very, very uh, good performance here at the very first start of the experiment. Performance decreases, however. Performance decreases, however, once selectivity gets unpredictable. Uh, 
and we uh, see the worst runtime and the most mispredicted branches once we enter the area around 50% predictivity. So it's half, half, I don't know the outcome of this predicate. And we are indeed penalized by the CPU, all of the mispredicted branches and all of the instruction that had to be removed from the pipeline really add up. We see the penalty here. Things get better again when the, predict when the selectivity of the predicate um, is getting higher again. The predicate is less selective and we almost always enter the piece of code that writes to the selection vector. Things get predictable again and uh, indeed the performance of the loop is better now. It's not as good as in the beginning here. At 100% we do not reach the performance of the beginning of the experiment because at this point we really have to do some extra work. We have to enter this particular piece of code, we have to write to the selection vector, but uh, we are performing way better than in this unpredictable 50% range here. Okay. So back to the editor. And now let's see what happens if I if I sort, I'm sorry, if I sort the values in the input vector, you see uh, I've populated the values with completely, uh, the input vector with completely random values, okay, and I will continue to do that. But in this next experiment, I will then sort the values in ascending fashion, okay? I will sort the values in ascending fashion. So uh, at the beginning of the vector, we will find the small values. At the end of the vector, we will find the large values. All right, everything else stays the same. What will happen now? Okay, I invite you to think a minute about uh, the behavior of this particular branch now and the predictability of the outcome of this particular if then else. Okay, so let's switch over to the terminal again and invoke compilation. So here we go, compile again and run the experiment. We saw some delay there because of the uh, sorting. Uh, and now we see really good, really good performance throughout the entire range, the entire range of the experiment. All right, so what has happened here? that the predictability of these branches is really very, very nice. Uh, we will find all the small values in the, at the beginning of the, uh, of the vector. And regarding our less than V predicate, all of these small values will uh, qualify regarding the predicate. There will be some cutoff point where the values in the, in the, in the input vector will then exceed the value V. From that point on, for the rest of the entire run of the loop, we will not enter the particular uh, piece of, of code. We will not write to the selection vector. Again, this is a perfectly predictable situation. In the first part of the loop, in the first part of the processing of the input vector, best predictability, we will always write to the selection vector. In the second point, after the cutoff point, when we exceed the V value in our, color, uh, in our input column, uh, Again, perfect predictability, and uh, and we see that uh, indeed reflected by the very nice uh, performance throughout the entire selectivity range here. Okay, back to the code again, and one more experiment. Let's disable the sorting again, and now let's enable the branchless uh, selection. So this is the original branch full selection. Okay, disable that. Instead, enable the branchless version. All right, in which we rely on the outcome of this predicate to be represented as the integer zero or one, just as explained on the slide. Okay, uh, time again to compile. Back to the shell. Okay, one last compile run and one last run of the experiment. All right, perfectly stable performance across the selectivity range. Perfectly stable 
because we are completely unaffected by the selectivity of the outcome of the predicate. It will either yield zeros or ones. Uh, we will add these to the out index into the selection vector. We will do this in all, all across the selectivity range here. You see really stable times. Again, the times are a bit worth at the end of the experiment where we need more writes or where the selection vector indeed grows. Uh, but uh, no peak regarding selectivity, uh, selectivity um, misprediction in this branchless selection implementation. Very interesting. Okay. As I told you, I invite you to play with this particular file. Let's bring it into the real state again, in the original state, so that you find the file when I upload it for you. Uh, so that you find it in its pristine original condition. Okay, one more thing. This idea of branchless selection is a really versatile idea and what you will find in uh, modern database systems that try to uh, adapt to the modern CPU architecture and that are really sensitive to branch prediction, misprediction and pipelining modern CPUs, you will find that selection is implemented in a variety of ways inside these systems. There's actually a whole space of possibilities in which you could, uh, which you could exploit to implement efficient selections on modern CPUs. Uh, for example, let's consider the evaluation of conjunctive predicates inside such a system, all right? Uh, we could just play the branchless selection game and apply that trick and uh, just evaluate the, the Boolean uh, expressions P1 and P2 in our C program. Both of these are interpreted or may be interpreted as either zeros or ones in the, in the C program as we have just seen. If we do that in this particular fashion, then the outcome of this of this bit and operation, please be aware that this is the bit and operator in, uh, in C. It's not the normal logical end operator, it's the bit and operator. So if either of these, uh, of these uh, operands here yields a zero, the entire thing will yield zero, which is just uh, the represent our representation in the branchless selection mode for a false outcome. And that's what we want. If both of these are one bits, then this bit end will yield one. And that's our indicator that indeed the entire conjunction yielded the, a true value. Okay. And uh, the one will then be added to the out index pointing into the selection vector. Indeed, this implements the correct semantics of a conjunctive predicate. This is something that we could uh, also apply to conjunction and disjunction. So the branchless selection trick also works in this scenario. We could also mix, we could also mix this branchless selection technique and regular branching, regular if then else based branching. Uh, and this could to lead to code that looks like this. This would also be code that tries to evaluate the uh, conjunction P1 and P2 but in this case, we have identified a very picky, a very selective piece of the predicate, the P1 piece here, this piece. This has been identified as to be very selective and thus very predictable, okay? So if it's very selective and thus very predictable, uh, then the using of if then else to implement the branching is not that of much of a problem even in a modern pipeline CPU. Also, because this is a very selective and very picky predicate, this piece of the code will not enter that often. Okay, uh, so we can really save some effort there. Uh, whenever P1 indeed evaluates to false, then Boolean shortcut tells us that the entire predicate will be false. There is no need to actually enter this particular piece of the code. So a very predictable branch that protects, protects us from evaluating this piece of the code unnecessarily. If we enter this piece of the code, because P1 evaluated to true, all right, then it's probably time to also evaluate P2. And we do that with the branchless selection trick. Okay, so P2 will be evaluated if it either yield one or zero, and we will use this value to maintain the output index into the selection vector.
Okay, so all of this together will implement the semantics of this junction. And all of this, the efficiency of this really relies on the observation that P1 is super selective and super picky. Okay, so if P1 shouldn't be uh, uh, selective and if it's indeed unpredictable, then the whole scenario, the whole idea breaks down, of course. This is just mentioned in the footnote as a caveat here. Okay, so let's switch over to the editor once more and to the mixed mode conjunction file where I indeed have uh, modified the file that we've just seen to implement this idea of mixed mode selection. So I've brought several mixes, several alternatives of the implementation of a conjunctive uh, condition here with me. And the conjunctive condition, I think it's mentioned at the top of the file, this is the conjunctive condition we are going to consider. Okay, you see that this is a conjunction and one part of the conjunction this first part, this is already, this is the well-known part in which we are in control of selectivity. We will just use different values of V here to control the selectivity of this particular predicate. The selectivity of this predicate is really hopeless. We will have some random values in the call column here. We will look uh, for values that are uh, even. Okay, some of these values will be even, some of the random values will be odd. It's completely unpredictable what, what happens here. We have no control over the selectivity. This really is a 50-50 outcome predicate. Very, very hard to predict. Okay, and uh, what we will do now, we will implement the selection regarding this conjunction here in three different ways. One, one way will be the branchless selection mode where we will just use the bit end technique mentioned on the previous slide. All right. In the other case, where we will have a mixed mode selection where we will place this first part of the predicate, this piece of the predicate inside and if then else, and the other part will be just maintained using branchless selection. All right. And uh, we should uh, see a familiar outcome uh, if the selectivity of this particular predicate is very high, then we should see a really good performance there. Uh, if we place this predicate in the if-then-else and let it play the role of the predicate that protects the entering of the, uh, of the piece of code that maintains the selection vector, then all bets are off. We will probably see uh, the worst performance for this, uh, for this version C of the code, where we have probably in error placed the unpredictable predicate inside the if then else. Okay, so all of this is reflected by the C code that you'd see down here. This is just the logic to have these increasing V values that let us control selectivity. You know that already. This is the first implementation, the branchless implementation of the conjunction using the bit and technique. All right. The alternative B is using the predicate that can have really good predictability and selectivity in the place of the predicate that is protecting this block of code. And if the predictability of this outcome is really high, then we expect some uh, real savings here, some really good performance, because we will protect ourselves from entering this piece of code if it's, if it's completely unnecessary. And all bets are off in the version C, where we have probably an error, as I told you, placed this completely unpredictable predicate in the if then else, and then only uh, evaluate the potentially well predictable predicate inside the branchless selection mode. This is, of course, doomed to fail. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Back to the shell. And it's time to compile again. All right, one last time, compiler run and experiment run, mixed mode conjunction. Selectivity increases and you see the selectivity in this very first column. Okay, and uh, this is what we see. So this is the branchless selection implementation and it's really unaffected, it's really unaffected by selectivity as you can see here. It's really working very stable, delivering quite okay performance across the selectivity range. Uh, then we see the mixed mode selection, the mixed mode selection that uses the predictable predicate, at least predictable for some 
for some selectivity ranges in place of the if then else branch. And we see that we start out really nicely, really nicely, when we have a very predictable situation that protects us from entering the maintenance of the selection vector code. Very nice. So we look very good there when we enter the very hard to predict uh, uh, portion of the code, then of course things look worse here. And the option C is really the worst version. This is the worst version of them all because uh, we have placed a very, very unpredictable uh, uh, predicate in the if then else part of the uh, conjunctive uh, predicate evaluation. It's of course completely unrelated to selectivity here. This is really. Uh, this is really um, uh, this is really uh, a very sad story here, but we have done that in error, as I told you. Okay, so I will place these files in the repository for you to download and to play with. I can only invite you to play with this. I can also invite you to think about this particular question here, the quiz question. What will happen if we sort the input of the column vector or the input column vector in ascending fashion? Before you enable this QSort and then recompile the file and then observe what's uh, going to happen there, maybe it's worth to spend a minute and try to predict what you will see as a result. It's a good test to see whether you have, uh, have followed the discussion here. Okay, so I hope that you found this discussion uh, worthwhile and interesting. Uh, there is lots of more cool stuff to explore in the course of this uh, DB2 run in summer semester 2020. Looking forward to do that with you. Well, it's my job to do that and I will do my job. Uh, please stay tuned. Uh, looking forward to explore the rest of the stuff with you. Uh, take care and bye-bye.